sort of hijacked it, really. I, I, in fact, I've been hijacked. I didn't know this was going to happen, so I'm, I've just had a really nice time. I haven't had so many chums around um, for such absolute years. So anyway, uh, the other Peter in Wandsworth is with us. Hello. Hello. That rings a bell. <laughs> That's what he thinks of the show. I know what it is. It's Hooray! a... Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! You're listening to The Last Nightline with Mike Allen on LBC Radio. God save the Queen. <laughs> Excellent. Shall we stand up now? Yeah. I thought it was Grossy Modo. I thought, hang on. I said the door, Lawrence. I think he's at the door. P Peter is a town crier and you work at, you work at uh, the Tower London Edition on the hill. I do indeed, yes. No, I've never heard you with your bell out before, Peter. <laughs> I've never heard out here tonight. It's not an answer. It's awesome, isn't it? Our neighbours in ones with the gone bananas. Have they have, actually? And, and not to mention Wimbledon. I guess it's true. I, I, do you know, it's a... For, listen, I've, I've got people here who are not actually on the same thought process as us, but Peter, <laughs> We're not on how, any thought process. how long is the... The, uh, the, the bell. Clapper. How long is your clapper? Clapper. Um, how long is the handle? <laughs> how the all, the all of it. The, the, uh, the it, it. It weighs 17 pounds. Wow. Wouldn't want to see that slapped on a table, would you? <laughs> Definitely put a tin in the mouth. Well, at least you've got Nick it being that heavy. <laughs> no, absolutely. Peter, how long have you been a town crier? 20 years. It's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. And it's quite ironical. I was one of the first voices in LBC some 20 odd years ago with Janet Street, Porter and Paul Callan. Mm. Oh. I don't wonder last. A Do thing you know... called Two in the Morning. I remember that. I remember that. In fact, they've still got the teeth marks on the wall. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's funny. I was I walked in the studio because they've altered the. Uh, it's very cutting, wasn't it? I can be very cutting, you know. And you know, and I haven't even got the turbo on at the moment. I'm still running under boost. I'm being very light tonight. Do you know, Peter? Do you know? Do you know that expression? All things come around that go around, or something Thank like you. that. Thank you. Do you know, on the wall <laughs> next to me here, <laughs> on the wall next to me... What is Tony Ogard doing, for Christ's sake? <laughs> no, I'm on the wall, you're no, right, leave me alone. He's in on the wall girls, is lap. a brown stain. We're engaged we have this, in brown stain. Uh, Blue Hessian lining in the studio. It's it's uh, nice. it's it's if actually if they spent fifty quid on it, it'd be good enough to condemn. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's this brown stain, which which was placed here when Brian Hayes left this company, um, because they'd asked him to move to another, another time slot, and he said, "No, I've been sacked um, because I can't do my time slot." And there was this brown coffee stain. Now it might be argued in the annals of time that he never did it, but all I would say is that. Before he came in the studio, there wasn't one on the wall. <laughs> and after he finished, there was. Uh, he's coming back. And I walked in today, and they've done the paint job on the place. It looks like MFI without the aggression, you know? And um, sort of Ikea FM. And, and there's his picture on the wall next to the studio door, on the new colours, you know? And he's standing, and I thought, this is interesting, because he's coming back and to meet his own mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it just, it just made me think, but Peter, before you go, is it possible you could ring your bell for us? Because as you're going to be one of our last callers, uh, we, we really like to sort of Peter? capture it. Would you I, mind? I shall do it again. He's going to do okay. it again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Oi, oi, at 11.20, you're listening to Mike Allen on LBC Radio. God save the Queen. <laughs> and goodbye. God bless you, Peter. Thank you very much indeed. I, well, oh. you know what? I don't allow music on LBC. That's why God, <laughs> why God invented detached houses. Who are you doing? Wow, that's a loud one, isn't it? Do you reckon he's in the high-rise? Wouldn't oh. you just love him above you? Wouldn't you great? you drop that at night. You'd be lying there, wouldn't you, waiting for the next one? <laughs> Listen, you guys, I know you have to go because you've got to, you know, do a bit tomorrow. Terry, you've got to be up at uh, all sorts of times, haven't you? Yeah. Five o'clock. Oh, you. terrible. Lawrence, bless you. Good to see you, Mike. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed. And I'll see you, see soon. you soon. Yeah. Tony, thanks for being with us. God bless you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. And now it's finished. <laughs> Alan, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Terry, bless you. Thank you. And Meg, thank you very much indeed. We're going to take a pause. We'll be right back. If you've uh, got some fond memories of LBC, it's 973-9733. If you want to leave money, it's 603-1152. And uh, if you'd like to complain, what's the number of broadcasting now? Call them there. Thank you so much. London Talkback, 11.52 a.m. The station that puts you in touch with London. Call Mike Allen on 071-973.
Well, that was a lovely treat. You know, I love surprises. It doesn't often happen because uh, I learned, as I think most people who work before cameras or before an audience many years ago, to turn my head very slowly so that I'm not normally surprised. Well, it can... <laughs> and it's such a you know, treat when something happens like that. Really, I really have enjoyed working with those people. And the amount of letters we received, so very kind, um, expressing, you know, thanks for the programmes. But I was very pleased to see, saying thank you very much to your contributors, etc., etc., etc. And that's really nice that they came in tonight. I see we've got Diana on the line. I'll let her wait, actually, because, you know, normally she gets rushed to the head of the queue, you know, part the Audi, straight in, 40 minutes in the shower and gone. Hello, Anne. Oh, hello, Mike. Hello. Thank you all at LBC for many years of interesting, informative and enjoyable listening. Okay. You helped me to cope when my husband and I separated in 91 and I was left with three young children and I lived for Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights when you would be on the radio. And hearing your voice, it kept me sane and it helped me to cope. Okay. And also I want to thank you for Midnight Encounters, Mike. Exactly a year yesterday I went on Midnight Encounters and I met a wonderful man and we've been seeing each other for nearly a year now. We get on so well and I'm so happy. I oh. cannot believe my luck. Oh, that's great. I'm so pleased. I really am because... I it's, you know, when things go terribly, terribly wrong, you feel absolutely desolated, don't you? Yeah, you do. You lose somebody and you sit there and you think, oh, it will never, ever change. I'll feel like this forever, but I'm so pleased you've gone through that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful to you because you kept on saying to people on, on the radio to sort of phone in, you know, you've got to try and change your luck and it works. You've just got to do it. Yeah, you well, know? And I'm going, Yeah, I'm going to miss listening to you because you've always been my favourite oh. and you've got such a lovely voice. Anyway, Mike, good luck in whatever you do, and you're going to be sadly missed. Oh, bless and you. And thank you very much. Thanks, Anne. You're very kind. 973-9733. So, clutch of things we were talking about earlier on. We were talking about you know, the need for actors, actresses, to train. Uh, it's interesting that an earlier correspondent in the uh, Eating Standards suggested that anyone could do it. I mean, why waste money? So, if there are any actors or actresses... I know actor is the collective, but uh, you know, there might be some in the old school... Who'd like to be uh, in a position to comment on that? I'd be interested to hear from you. We're also talking about the ridiculous suggestion that a hundred thousand, no, a hundred million pounds be cut. Good evening, Mike. Hello, happy days to you. And um, may I say um, thank you very much for giving us a very good programme on LBC and also all the Nightline presenters. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Also, the other night, you probably wondered how why my um, phone call was cut so short. Yes. Right, I wasn't rude. I went into an epileptic fit. Ah. You OK tonight? Yes, I'm OK at the moment, thank yeah, you. Yeah, good. We were, um, we were talking about that, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Last, last night, however, I was uh, lucky because I changed all the room round. Mm -hmm. And we've got, like, a set of three tables. Charles, you know, I'm not going to be here uh, after tonight, uh, just to remind you, but I'll try and write it down or something. Maybe, you know, you've got to get some of these hard edges away from areas. Just got to sort of think about that for the moment. Look after yourself. It's good to talk to you. Thanks for your call. 973-9733. I saw uh, Stevie Wright uh, started his uh, new programme on the TV the other night. I actually write, listened to Stevie Wright, but I really enjoyed it in the afternoon. I don't listen in the morning, but, um, well, simply because I'm most of the time asleep, actually. I've mean, been working here. Um, I'm not very keen to listen to breakfast radio, but, um, so I don't normally get the radio on until about 11 o'clock. Anyway, so I miss him in the afternoon, but... Uh, and sometimes he's called me and we've had a little conversation. I don't know whether this is sort of a mutual admiration, but I, I admire the work he does. And I saw him on the TV the other night. And, uh, I thought it was great, the Steve Wright's People programme. And it, I was just coming in tonight and there was just a trailer on the TV before I left for it. And I thought, you know, that's interesting. When you talk about LBC Radio, that's really what it's been about, isn't it? We've had the experts in. We've had this, that and the other. We've had blokes in telling us how to grow plants, paint walls, fix plumbing, and they're all very, very good. Guys teaching us how to repair cars, anything. Experts, yes. But the real strength I was thought of LBC was its people, the people that made up the audience, the people that presented it. Because over it is one great big banner in my mind, and that is an appreciation of humanity, an awareness of humanity. And I think LBC in its greatest moments has been about humanity, great humanity. I've been affected by it, and I listened to it, and I thought, oh, 
that's amazing. Something that's cut right to the bone. Often, you know, if you're listening to particularly moving pieces of music, it's not unusual that something might catch you. Even if you know it well, and you think, oh, yes. There was um, a piece by Van Morrison, which uh, you might have a copy. Uh, the track I'm thinking of is called Coney Island, and I think it's on Avalon Sunset, isn't it? How interesting that this song just goes along, and it just stops. He's been describing picking up the newspapers, and they, they've got a couple of um, glasses of Welks because they were starving, didn't have to wait till supper time, you know, and it goes on, it talks about this, and it says, and it, and it just stops with the line, something like, wouldn't it be great if every day could be like this? And it's those high spots for me, listening, you know, to um, this station, other presenters, yourselves talking, when it hits a particular button and you think, absolutely right, you know, that's what people think, that's what people demand. So they're just some of the thoughts that I had about um, LBC Radio. I don't know what yours might be. Nine seven three nine seven double three. Christine, hello. Hi, Mike. Hello. Um, this, I'm a first time caller as well. And a last time caller. And as a somebody last said time last caller. night. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought basically I'd pluck up the courage and give them a call to you to say thanks a lot for everything you've done over the years, and we're going to really miss you. Oh, you're very kind. I should <laughs> miss you too. Do you know something? This is um, because of the two frequencies are used in a simulcast, AM and FM here. We reach so many people, and I've got to tell you, it's in talk radio terms, it's the big gig. It is. Yeah, and it's and it will finish tonight because there won't be nothing else like the, yourself. The, You're right. Well, no, there won't be the two frequencies in simulcast anymore. Mm. You know, there'll be a separate service on each frequency. So it's the big one, and and I'm just so pleased that having been in radio, they asked me to do it, Brilliant. and I'm sure that I speak for Robbie here. You know, so it's been a very special time for us. We've also appreciated it, and I'm glad that you liked it. Okay. Tell me something. Has it altered your life in any way? It definitely has. Um, I mean, just like the lady who called um, earlier on, where basically she had problems in her love life, and um, she decided to start listening to the radio program. I suppose the same thing happened to myself. And um, it's been enlightening ever since. And, um, as I said, I've enjoyed listening to your program over the years, and I'm going to really, really miss you all, really. Well, my lovely, <laughs> uh, thank you for that affection, and thank you for the kindness. It's, um, it's been a pleasure, you know, so if you, there was something for you, it was good. I reckon um, no one could have listened to this station without thinking uh, for any period of time in recent years that uh, there were times when we were a bit subversive, Surely not. Well, a lot of people have expressed uh, frank views on situations, but once again it comes down to not just being frank and uh, controversial for the sake of it, because I think, speaking for myself, that's something I try to avoid, because um, I don't think big people do that. I mean, I say big, I mean adults. I don't think adults necessarily make a lot of noise when they're making a point, and certain presenters in TV, for example, have a reputation the same. What are you saying? Are you saying to me, Prime Minister, and it's very sort of aggressive, and I, and I rather think that um, they're doing it for the show. I really can't believe that they're convinced that adults would actually carry on such a way. And interesting enough, I, I find that um, from the, the letters and bits and pieces, and obviously the presenters here talk to each other, and we do see each other. I mean, I haven't seen Steve Allen for a bit for a conversation for about four weeks, so it's lovely that he popped in just now and said hello. But when we do talk, we do notice that from the letters that we receive, and people say... Thank you very much for talking to that person that way, because you made the point without embarrassing anyone by shouting and hollering on it. But that doesn't mean we didn't shout and holler, does it? Oh, no. We'll speak to Alice and the rest of the gang in just a minute. Hmm. And what are they like? That's my daughter. Charming. Oh, she is. She can charm. Charm. Charming. Totally charming. She and, can get um, her own way. And they've got a nose for a situation, literally. Uh... They can see a good deal three miles off. She can do that. And she can get anyone to do anything. Sure. And they're very good with words. Do remember that... She's a lawyer. Yeah. William Shakespeare was a rat. <laughs> was he? Yeah. They're great writers. Great writers. They, uh, very good at communicating. You see, when you see rats, and what, you know, people associate rats with uh, disease and stuff like that, but don't, don't look at the animal like that. Look at the animal for what it is. And it really tells you all about the sign... Uh, Barry Fantoni has this wonderful story he tells about rats. He said, 
they fear that their teeth will keep growing, so they keep chewing. Really? Yeah. And you relate that to rat people. And what does that tell you? It tells you they keep talking. <laughs> and they're always talking. I don't know a rat that can keep quiet for very long. <laughs> One of my dearest friends, uh, I say, I don't see too much, is Ben Morris-Jones. Uh, he's, he's a mature...